This tutorial is going to introduce two closely related pieces of software, Pure Data, also known as PD, uh, and MaxMSP. Both PD and MaxMSP started out as exactly the same piece of software. Uh, they have a common ancestor, um, and therefore uh, both pieces of software are more or less functionally identical. In other words, uh, anything that you can do in PD, you can also do in Max MSP and vice versa. One fundamental difference uh, between Max MSP and PD is that Max MSP is a commercial piece of software marketed by Cycling74, uh, which costs around three to four hundred pounds for a license. Uh, here's the website here. Uh, whereas PD. Uh, is open source and can therefore be downloaded, modified and distributed free of charge. Uh, and we're going to start by having a look at PD. PD is a graphical programming language uh, that can be used in an infinite number of different ways. It was conceived as an interactive tool for computer music um, and uh, the key thing to understand about it is that you decide what it does. So um, let's say you want to be able to control the speed uh, at which a sound file plays back using the mouse, uh, the computer mouse, and record the results into a new sound file. Well, you could use, uh, you could design a way to do that uh, in PD. Um, let's take another example. Let's say you want uh, a program that lets you take 20 different sound files and map them individually to the keys of a MIDI keyboard so that you can play the MIDI keyboard and play the sound files together in different combinations while recording the results into another sound file. Well, you could do that in PD as well by designing a program to do that. Um, in other words, uh, you can use it to design your own customizable ways of creating, manipulating and processing sound. Um, because PD can be controlled in lots of different ways, in other words, you can use the keyboard and mouse, but you can also use MIDI keyboard controllers, foot switches, variety of different sensors and so on. Um, it means that uh, it's very good for improvising with sound. Uh, and as such, it's often used as a tool in live performance. The version of PD that we're going to be using in this tutorial is PD Extended 0.41.4, which can be downloaded from this website here, and uh, this is the URL. When you first start PD, this is what you see. This is the PD window, uh, and this is where PD reports back to you about what it's doing. Before we can do anything uh, in PD, we need to go to the file menu uh, and click New. And this gives us an empty window, as you can see. Now this en empty window that we've just uh, created is called a patch or a patcher. And this is where we're going to design our interactive sound application. PD allows you to build up applications using objects. And now I can create an object by going to the Put menu and choosing Object. I can decide now where I want to put the object by moving around and clicking. So if I click here, that's where I'm going to put it. And now I have to type into this box where we can see the flashing cursor which object it is that I want. Now we'll come back to what objects are available in a moment. So in this box I'm just going to type cycle and then the tilde symbol, which is like this, and then a space, and then the number 440. And if I click again, that creates the object. I can also create an object using the Control-1 keyboard shortcut, and since we're going to be creating a lot of these, it's worthwhile getting to know that shortcut. And having clicked to position it, I then type the object name that I want into the object, and this time I'm going to create a DAC tilde object. Click again, and that creates the object. Now, each object in PD uh, does something different. Uh, the cycle object, which I've just created, uh, generates a sine wave um, at the frequency that we've given it. So this object here is going to generate a sine wave at 440 hertz. 
The DAC object uh, is short for digital to analog converter. Um, and what that object does is it takes a digital audio signal uh, and sends it to the sound card of the computer, where it's then converted into an analog signal that we can hear. Um, so I can join the output of the cycle object by dragging to the input of the DAC object. And now if I go to the media menu and choose audio on, we should be able to hear the results. Now when I created those objects, how did I know uh, what to type in the box in order to uh, create the object? Well, if I right click in an empty space in the patcher, and then from the context menu that appears, choose help. Now, uh, this will give me a list of all of the built-in objects in PD. Scrolling down, I can see uh, the DAC object, which I created. So if I right click on that and choose help, I get some further information about that particular object. Right at the start of this tutorial, uh, I said that Pure Data and Max MSP are two pieces of software which are more or less functionally identical. So just to demonstrate that, we'll now have a quick look at Max MSP. When you first start the application, this is what you see. This is the Max window, and just like the PD window, this is where Max uh, reports back to you about what it's doing. Before we can do anything, we have to go to the File menu and choose New Patcher. And when I do that, I get a blank canvas. And just like in PD, this is where we're going to start building our patch, which is uh, our uh, interactive audio music application. If I go to the object menu, I can create a new object. Now, for the time being, we can ignore absolutely everything on here except this, uh, which is an object. So just like we did in PD, we're going to create an object. And I have a flashing cursor where I'm going to type cycle, the tilde symbol, and then a space, and then 440. And when I click, it creates the object. I can also create an object uh, in Max by double-clicking in the patcher, which brings up the same menu. So I'm going to create another object, and this time it's going to be a DAC, tilde, click to create the object and just like we did in PD I can connect the output of the cycle object to both of the inputs of the DAC object by clicking and dragging from one to the other. Now I need to switch the audio on which in Max MSP is the options menu, DSP status and here there is a, a, a box, a drop-down menu that will allow me to switch the audio on. So when I do this, we should hear the same 440 hertz sine wave that we heard when we were using PD. Although Max MSP and PD are very similar, um, and although you can achieve the same things using either piece of software, uh, that doesn't mean that they're identical. PD has a relatively basic set of built-in objects and uh, requires you to do quite a lot of work or to install add-ons uh, in order to achieve complicated tasks. Since it's open source and developed by a large number of people, there are plenty of add-ons available uh, and you have the infinite flexibility of working with an open framework that you can alter to suit your own requirements. Uh, but because uh, it has this fairly basic set of built-in objects, it can be harder to learn than Max MSP if you're completely new to both applications. Max MSP, on the other hand, uh, is commercial, developed by only a small number of people, and has a comparatively large selection of built-in objects, including some user-friendly graphical objects. It is less flexible to a certain extent than PD, and obviously you have to pay for it, but if you're new to Max MSP and PD, you'll probably find that Max MSP is a bit more approachable. It is important to be aware of both pieces of software, though, and to keep in mind that once you know what you're doing, you shouldn't find PD any more difficult than Max MSP. In fact, you may well find it more flexible.